Hi there. Now in this video what I want to do is look at how we use these identities here. You'll notice they all look very similar. And in the first identity we've got a sine x plus b cos x is identical to r sine of x plus alpha where a, b, r and alpha are constants. And let's just assume for the moment that r equals the square root of a squared plus b squared and alpha equals the inverse tan of b over a. I'll prove this to you later on in the video. But for now, if you get a question looking something like this, this would be typical of the kind of thing that we would use these identities for. We've got here express 3 sine x plus 4 cosine x in the form r sine of x plus alpha where r is greater than 0 and alpha is an angle in degrees between 0 and 90 degrees. So in other words r is a positive value and alpha is an acute angle and this will always be the case in any question that uses these identities. So to do something like this on the assumption that this result here is true, then looking at this first identity here, we can see it matches up. The coefficient of sine x, a, would be the 3. And the coefficient of cosine x would be the b, which is 4. And that would be identical to our sine of x plus alpha, what we've got here. So we should be able to work out what r and alpha are by using these two formulae here. So if I was doing this, I would say then that a was equal to 3 and b was equal to 4. And from this, we can work out r quite easily because r is the square root then of a squared plus b squared. So that's going to be 3 squared plus 4 squared. In other words, the square root of 9 plus 16, which is 25, square root of 25 is 5. Notice it's not plus or minus 5. R is a positive value. Now, as for the angle alpha, we can use this second result here. Alpha is equal to the inverse tan of B divided by A. In other words, 4 divided by 3, 4 thirds. And if you work this out on your calculator, making sure it's in degrees mode, then it turns out to be 53.13 and so on degrees. And rounding that, say, to one decimal place would be 53.1 degrees to 1 dp. So we can conclude then that 3 sine x, if we just write it in, 3 sine x plus for cosine x, we're told that would be identical to r sine of x plus alpha. And r is 5, so we can write that as 5 times the sine of x plus alpha. And alpha, we've just worked out, is 53.1, and that's measured in degrees. Now that's all well and good, because you're taking a face value that these results are true. But what I want to show you now is how we can get these results from this identity. What we do, and it's the same method in each one of these, so when you come to watching the second video on this, maybe you might want to have a go at it yourself before watching the video. But uh, anyway, we'll take the first one here, R sine of x plus alpha and then just put that it's identical to r and then now we need to expand the sine of x plus alpha and you're going to need to remember this identity remember the sine of a plus b is identical to the sine of a cosine of b plus cosine of a times sine of b and in this example a is the x and b is the alpha. So expanding that then it's going to be the sine of x multiplied by the cosine of alpha and then it'll be plus the cosine of x multiplied by the sine of alpha. I'll just remove the 
identity there, so we've got more room to work on this. So expanding the bracket, first term will be r sine x cosine alpha, but I'm going to rearrange that, write it as r cosine alpha multiplied by sine x. And for the second term in the expansion, it'll be r cosine x sine alpha. But again, rearranging that, I'm going to write it as r sine alpha multiplied by cosine of x. Now, what we've got here is two terms where in the first term here, the coefficient of sine x is a constant. r is a constant, alpha is a constant, so we get a constant value times sine x. I'm going to call that constant a, so we've got a times sine x. And if I use a similar argument here, I've got another constant times cosine x. I'll call that constant b, so we've got b times the cosine of x. So you can see that I can write r sine of x plus alpha in this particular format. And that will be true for doing any one of these identities here. Just expand what you see on the right hand side and compare it then to the particular form that you get out. Now in each of these examples we'll need to work out what r and alpha are. And we do that by comparing coefficients of sine x and cosine x. Here we've got the coefficient of sine x is r cos alpha, and that will match up with the a there. And the coefficient of cosine x is r sine alpha, and that will match up with the b here. So let's just write down comparing coefficients as the method that we're going to use. So that in. And the coefficients then that we're going to be looking at are sine x and cosine x. But we'll start with cosine x first of all. It just is easier to work with. So if we put cosine x, we've got r sine alpha equals that b. So r sine alpha equals b. And if we now look at the coefficients of sine x, then we've got r cosine of alpha, well that equals the a. And to solve these two equations for alpha and r, we've got to do simultaneous equations. So I'll number them 1 and 2. And when you've got this style, what we do is we do equation 1 divided by equation 2. And let's see what it gives us. Well the r's will cancel out and we'll just have sine alpha divided by cosine alpha, which is tan of alpha. So we have tan of alpha equals, and then we'll have b divided by a, b over a. So picking the cosine x coefficient first of all meant that we just get sine alpha over cos alpha when we divide 1 by 2. So that's the reason why I wrote it that way around. So to get alpha, what I've got to do now is just take the inverse tan to both sides. So alpha equals the inverse tan of b divided by a. And that's the result we had to prove here. And it will be much the same when you work with any of these identities here. Let's just border this off now, give yourself a little bit more room when it comes to working out what r is. So to get r, what we do is we square equation 1 and add it to the square equation 2. In other words, we do equation 1 squared plus equation 2 squared. Let's see what that gives us. Well, we'll have r squared sine squared alpha plus r squared cos squared alpha. And if I was to pull r squared out as a common factor, we'll have r squared multiplied with sine squared alpha and then plus cos squared alpha. And that would be equal to b squared plus a squared. So we'll put b squared plus a squared. Now, do you recognize the identity sine squared alpha plus cos squared alpha? You should know that 1 comes to 1. 
So we've got r squared times 1 equals b squared plus a squared. Well, r squared times 1 is just going to be r squared. And instead of writing b squared plus a squared, I'm going to write a squared plus b squared. And if I take the square root to both sides, then r will be equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. And it's not plus or minus because we've set r to be a positive value. And that checks out with what we've got over here. Now clearly, if you can learn these particular identities, then it's very quick when you get expressions like these on the left, the harmonic form, and asked to convert them into these particular forms, then using this result here, it can be done very quickly. However, I would encourage you to sit down and try and prove each one of these identities. It's a good skill to have. And you'll see that by following a similar method to this, you'll always get these particular results. So I'll leave that with you and I hope that, uh, as I say, this has been of some use and it will set you up to be able to do other examples in this style.